Hello, everybody, and welcome out to July uh, 2023, the Viewfinder Low Vision Resource Center monthly webinar. Um, I'm glad to have you back with us. This is the first time we're doing the webinar uh, since late last year. Um, we kind of uh, had to put things on pause because we we're too busy in the clinic. And as we prep for our new doctor coming in August, we're excited to get back out and do a little bit more um, community outreach, a little more education. And one of the big projects I've always wanted to work on is more of an online library um, about low vision topics, tools, resources, um, the you know diseases themselves that cause low vision, and um, just widen a little bit the horizons of what's available to people online. Um, so these are topics that I talk about all the time in the clinic. Today, I wanted to touch on a really common one, uh, which is magnifiers and specifically video magnifiers. Um, you know, most of the time we can go and grab something over the counter uh, that helps our vision by zooming in, zooming out to make things a little bit easier to read. Uh, magnification is a topic we get into when glasses are no longer functional or at least no longer getting the job done. So uh, there's a lot we can do as far as giving you stronger glasses. Um, however, we get to a point where we have to change behavior. If we get to a high enough power, um, you know, beyond usually a four in addition. So this isn't a four over the counter. This is a four in addition to your distance prescription. Um, when we get beyond that, we really have to change the distance at which you're working. And this is just the physics issue. The higher the power goes, the closer the thing you're holding has to come in order to be clear. So if I was to take an extremely powerful lens like this, this is a six times magnifier or roughly 20 times times in diopters. Diopters is what we use to measure glasses. If I was using this to read a paper, so I held my paper here in front, I would have to come all the way in to where it's almost touching my nose in order for me to read it. And the main disadvantages I get is I don't have enough area around to see the whole picture because it's magnified. So I would have to move my head back and forth to read through uh, the article or the letter, or whatever it is I'm looking at. So if I hold that lens out here in front of the camera, again, the paper is terribly blurry. It's not in focus at all until I come terribly, terribly close. And so if I take that away, you guys see just how close I'm holding that in front of the monitor. Of course, on the monitor, everything is flip-flop backwards. So you're not going to be able to read that very clear here in this video. Um, that's just to demonstrate that uh, glasses can go really strong. We can magnify in glasses, um, but it comes with this disadvantage. Of course, your hands are free. So if you're a sewer and you're okay sewing on the end of your nose, um, threading the needle that way, that might work really well for you. But getting outside of glasses, we get into our standard Sherlock Holmes style handheld magnifier. And that's great for spot checking things that might be difficult to see as we go in and out. We can make things bigger and smaller. And we'd have to pass left and right to get through that whole thing. But that's one of the biggest issues people find with handheld magnifiers is that you don't get enough room. Again, we're losing area as we magnify so having to pass this left and right through your whole book as you read your book is taking some of the fun out of what you're doing. And the stronger you go with the magnifier, the smaller it gets. If you would believe it, this is a seven times magnifier. This is the eight. And you see just how much smaller of a size we get out of that. So when I get to a certain power in magnifiers, that's often when I turn to using video magnification instead. Video magnification means we're going to use a device of some kind with a camera to zoom in and zoom out. And that comes with advantages and disadvantages. The biggest disadvantage being that these devices are typically much more expensive than your standard handheld magnifier. It's easy to find a handheld magnifier for less than $100. But if we're looking at digital magnifiers, we're looking usually somewhere around $1,000 to get one that's high quality. Of course, you can always go online and look for things that are refurbished or, uh, you know, uh, being resold or um, perhaps older models, uh, 
discount brands. You know, there's always some off label uh, in another country uh, trying to be sold. Mileage is going to vary on those and, and uh, often come without a warranty. Uh, the products I like to sell are the premium ones. Uh, you know, I want patients to have the best equipment. And I think the last thing that a senior citizen needs who's got major vision impairment is the device that breaks down, causing them to go back into the store, having to send it back to the manufacturer, uh, dealing with the whole rigmarole. So to that end, I want to talk about a few devices I, I think are wonderful. Uh, the models I'm going to show are examples of the category. I don't want you to think these are the only tools out there. I'd love for you to come into the office and take a look at all the different brands that we have, many different sizes. They all have benefits and they all have uh, you know different gimmicks that might make it better than a different tool. So I'm going to start out today with one of my favorites, and that is the Ruby XLHD. Um, this is a wonderful little tool, has a nice little handle to pop out so we can hold this just like a handheld magnifier. Now, uh, with the Ruby, one of the things we'll see is right away, whatever's on the other side of the camera is what's getting magnified. And we can change colors, which is a huge benefit. All video magnifiers are going to change colors, change sizes, and focus at many different distances. So if I hold up my same little card I was looking at before, we can see right away that the Ruby's got some magnification going on compared to the background. If I put my finger on the plus button here, I can zoom in and zoom out to change the amount of magnification I'm getting. And that's really helpful because no matter how small it is, if I go all the way down to the little um, telephone book size print there, I can go in and out to get a little magnification but I can also choose to zoom until I get to incredibly big sizes. And this is big enough that you can see it shaking. So I'm not, I'm not perfectly steady. That's why I didn't go to medical school. Uh, but as you go along there, you can get back and forth through the whole sentence. The more the magnification, the shakier it's going to feel. So one of the things that's really helpful about the Ruby is when we put that little handle away, of course, I could hold this up and move it back and forth along. But what I really like is the ability to pop out a little kickstand and set that right on top of what I want to view. And then, so again, I can move that up and down throughout the page. I can zoom in and zoom out. And like I said, we can change colors. That's done with the blue buttons on the other side here. So we come down in the middle of that little sentence here. We can rotate through black and white, white on black, blues and yellows and different colors. And everybody's a little bit different. What might work well or work poorly for them? If needed, we can also take a snapshot, which means I can take away what I'm looking at and I'll still keep it on the screen. We hit that snapshot again and it's going to go back to the live view, which is pointing down towards me. Snap that kickstand shut and it's going to turn off. The screen powers off by itself pop that little kickstand open and it's going to turn right back on and we'll immediately begin viewing whatever we set this down on top of. So the Ruby XLHD, great little product, really easy. I like to say to stick right into a pocket, take around with you, uh, put it into a purse and a backpack. Great for kids who uh, need something small they can take from class to class in school to see all kinds of different things. Um, again, you can hold it up, right? If you're scanning up and down labels in a grocery store or maybe looking at something with lab equipment, you need to read what's on the other side there. But if we're extendedly reading, we pop out that little kickstand, put it on top and move it back and forth like a stand magnifier. So great little tool. But a lot of people will say, well, when we get to those bigger sizes and you're only getting a couple words at a time, how do you get around that? And the way we get around is by having a bigger screen that allows for a larger area of view, even with that magnification. So the other tool I want to show you today is the Explore 12. <clears throat> the Explore 12 is one of our favorite products here at Viewfinder. Um, it's hard to keep on the shelf because people like it so much. Um, you may have seen the very large CCTVs that we show, and I can't bring one of those back here to, to put on camera, um, but our biggest one goes about 27 inches. That's the Acrobat HD from Enhanced Vision. Um, wonderful device, but it's built to sit at a table or a desk. It's not something you really carry from place to place, unless you're a strong man and just feel like doing that. Um, 
The Explore 12, though, is a small enough size that you can take it back and forth with you to different places. Um, it does come out of the stand that it sits in. It also has its own kickstand that we can pop out. So we could place this right on top of something we might want to view. You'll see me moving there underneath. So I put my little card right underneath it and we'd move the device back and forth. But one of the big benefits of these desktop units, these larger screens we can go to is the ability to put it into a stand. So if I go back to normal color here, it doesn't matter what I put underneath we can get a good view of that. So if I take that same little card, put it right underneath there, then I can move that left and right. I'm just moving the card instead of having to move the whole device, which is a big benefit for a lot of people. We can still zoom in and zoom out. We can still change to different colors, which again, big benefit for some people. And as we zoom in, we just, the more we zoom, the more we have to move. And just notice it's not nearly as shaky because I'm not having to hold this up in the air. I'm not having to keep this on point. I can just move left and right through whatever it is I want to read or up and down through the column if it's a newspaper or something like that. Now, it does have a distance vision mode up here at the top. We're able to flip cameras. As we're zoomed in, the Explore 12 allows me to swipe left and right, but those are extra gimmicks for the Explore 12. Not all video magnifiers are going to do that. As I stated at the beginning, video magnifiers are always going to allow you to zoom in and out, and they're going to allow you to change colors. Many of them are going to focus at different distances, uh, but not all of them allow you to switch cameras. Not all of them allow you to use a touch screen. That's one nice thing that I like about the Explore 12, but it's not, not the biggest reason to get it. The biggest reason is the size and how it's lifted up from the desk. So if I switch to that distance camera, though, it's pointing now out to my little chart across the way. So I'm going to turn and tilt this a little bit to try to center up what I'm looking at. And as I push and zoom, you can see it is magnifying even at a distance. So we've got a number five there starting the chart. Now there's no flexible camera that goes along with this. So I have to manually move my Explore 12 and get a little glare there uh, to go back and forth across what I'm viewing. So if you wanna use this for television or something like that, it is gonna require a little bit of manipulation. There are other units that do have flexible cameras. We can go right back to our reading here. Um, and there are units that don't have any distance at all. Um, but these video magnifiers, again, are going to allow you to zoom in and zoom out. Whatever distance the device is made for, that's the benefit you should be expecting from it. So while our seven times handheld magnifier is always seven times, uh, the Explore 12 can go anywhere from one up to 15 times magnified. If we take it off of the stand, it goes up into the 20s. The Ruby will go up into the 20s as well. Larger units can go much stronger, many of them going up to 40 or even 60 times magnification. Very helpful when you have a uh, large amount of impediment to your vision to so people who are legally blind or those who are perhaps hand motion only and need something very big to see. If you get a medication bottle under there, maybe you only need that one word. Um, you can zoom in to a big enough size. So here's our 15 times magnification. And we might only fit the word visual or then and they under there. Um, but we need to be able to get things up big enough to do that. And so very important devices for everyone in the community to know about, but it gets better. Um, the way it gets better is that you might be walking around with a video magnifier and not even know it. If you have a smartphone, your smartphone and the camera in it is basically usable as a video magnifier. Now, it depends a lot on how old your smartphone is, the quality of the camera that you have, um, that's going to decide how much magnification you get, how good it is at focusing at different distances, um, and how expensive it was for you to get that particular device. Now, the thing is, you've already paid for that. So whether it was 400, 800, or anywhere in between, you've already bought that video magnifier. It tends to go with you everywhere you're going already, easy to slip into a pocket. Um, so that might be one of the first video magnifiers that you get into, but I would highly advise you to make use of it, get to know it, 
but it suffers some of the same limitations as the smaller devices like the Ruby, where your screen's only so big, it only has so much magnification, and it's subject to how shaky your hand might be. Now, your phone may or may not have a kickstand, depending on the kind of uh, cover that you have on your phone. So some people have uh, cases and covers, allow you to pop a kickstand out, set it right down on the table. But if you go on Amazon, there are um, a wide selection of different uh, stands you can put your phone on. I like the triangular ones that tend to sit in one place, but a lot of adjustable stands as well. And that makes it a very easy thing to set down and put a sheet of paper under. We get our Explore 12 off to the side here. I want to show that not only can you use your phone as a near magnifier, but if we point it out at the long distance and I pinch and zoom my camera, I can zoom in at any distance and get a lot of good view for what I'm doing. Now we're looking down towards the very bottom row there and I can see nine, three, eight, seven, four. Now my particular phone can go very, very big. So we're getting up to about a hundred times magnified to see that number eight. But you can see it gets very shaky the more power that I go into. I happen to have a Samsung Galaxy. Uh, Androids tend to have very powerful cameras. If you go with an iPhone, though, you're going to get 15 times magnification in the newest units. And that's wonderful. Many people aren't going to need more than 15 times magnification to see a face or to watch their grandkid play in baseball or to see a street sign or all the other distant things you might be looking for. So let's try something up close instead. I'm going to hold up that same little piece of paper we've been working on. Okay, and so if I hold this out at the distance, it can be kind of hard to do with two hands. Okay, if I started to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go to about five times magnification. I can hold up that card again, and you can see the difference between the card and the background and what's on my phone we get a lot of magnification coming through that. So I could pick up anything in the grocery store, uh, at home, a label I needed to look at and get really good view at what I'm trying to see there. Now it gets even better. Not only can I use that camera, but what's your camera on your phone for? Taking pictures. So if I had something long distance or up close or anywhere in between, and I'm too shaky with the phone to get good magnification doing that, all I have to do is snap a picture, take as many pictures as you want, and zoom in on that picture. So here we are. I'm going to point out towards my chart across the room. I'm going to start zoomed out. Okay, so I've taken my photo. My last photo is always going to go in the bottom corner. It's a little bit different on different phones, but you should always have a little preview of what your last image was. And where I'm just going to pinch and zoom, kind of hard to do backwards, pinch and zoom, and then I can move throughout my photo to try to light it up. And as I go there, I can't get quite as magnified as the live camera does, but that's still quite a bit bigger than what we can see here. So as I zoom in on that, I also can bring it closer to my face to get extra magnification. Same thing we can do on our little card. So if I point my phone down towards the card, I'm going to take a photo of it. I'm going to go to that last picture. As I open that up, I'm able to zoom in. I can keep going bigger and bigger. And if I can't fit it all on the page, sometimes turning to the side is going to help me get more words at the same time. And I can scroll left and right now that I've taken that picture and go up and down. And as I go down, I might need to go bigger. If that's too big, I'll go smaller and be able to process through that whole thing. So highly recommend doing that for, let's say you have a credit card that's hard to read and you need to use it uh, over the phone. Taking a picture of that, saving it in a favorites album allows you to go back to that repeatedly uh, without having to hunt it out of your bag, hold it up close, get your magnifier out. You just open your phone and go to that photo and zoom it in. You could read right through the serial number with much less of a headache than you might with handheld magnifiers or high powered glasses or many of these other tools. So the point I want you to get out of this today is there is a great series of products out there that might be a, you know, a boon to you and what you do in your daily lifestyle. I don't like anybody to feel pressured in my clinic that there's only one right choice for them. And the fact is, like a carpenter, you might need a lot of tools in your tool belt to get different things done. You can't hammer everything. You know, not every problem in life is a nail. 
Um, so we want to know that you have these choices for, let's say you get an old newspaper that's yellowed out and grayed and you need it more black and white. A video magnifier is a great way to handle that. Uh, let's say you need a small and portable device to zoom in at distance, to zoom in up close. Well, your cell phone might fit that bill perfectly. There are wearable video magnifiers. That's another topic we'll get into on another day. But uh, essentially, that camera goes up into a headpiece, and you can zoom in and out at any distance with that. Uh, works very similarly to a telescope. If you go back and watch my video on uh, bioptics and telescopes, uh, you'll get some sense of you know, how we use those devices. Um, but I want to thank you all for turning out today. I'm going to work on making these videos a little bit shorter like this one. We tended to go about an hour or so for all the last videos. But I want to make uh, shorter, um, not documentary, shorter blips that you can get into, um, learn a little bit of data, and move on to other things that are important. So thank you for turning out today. We'll be around last Friday of each month making a video like this. And a, a few days after that video is made, it should be ported up to YouTube and Facebook and onto our main website for you to peruse. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for turning out today. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our phone number at the main office in Mesa or to our email. Thanks so much. Take care.